Hey guys, it's Talon. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about stats again in Wild Rift. So as a follow-up to my previous video about stats, I now collected samples of 50 different games, 500 players all around master level, and I'm just going to kind of tell you guys some of the basic things I found, tell you guys what this might mean or might not mean, and then give you guys a copy of it in the link in the description so that if you're interested in analyzing the data yourself or looking at it, you are free to do so. Um, so initially I want to acknowledge about half of these games roughly are duo queue the other half being solo queue Which of course does mean that there's less variables on my team changing than the enemy team which may slightly skew the data However based on kind of what people say the matchmaking or how they say the matchmaking works that shouldn't really matter since they should be balancing uh, You know according to people they should balance the teams equally based on stats or whatever um, So again like that shouldn't really be too relevant though it is something to acknowledge and may change it slightly um, apart from that, the way that I organized everything, I organized by win rate, games, KDA, GPM, damage, damage taken, M MVPs, S's, A's, turret damage, the team they're on, you know, if I say me, that means it's me, if I say mine, they're on my team, and enemy is enemy, roll, of course, and then the result of the game, um, maybe I might have messed up a thing or two in these, like, typing these numbers out, it's definitely possible, it took me a long, long time to type all this stuff out, and for the first three games, I did not write the um, actual number of their like marks because I just simply didn't realize I should do that until after the first three and then all you know after that I have the marks specifically of every person um, if you're interested in that so anyways let's just get into the video okay guys so first I'm going to talk about the average stats of a player in master based on these 500 games quick correction 50 games not 500 games 500 players 50 games so most of these players are master or grandmaster level currently which is pretty early in the season meaning most of their skills and most of their peak ranks is grandmaster challenger and i wouldn't be surprised if many of these players reach sovereign this season so the average win rate of one of these play 500 players from my games of course there are some duplicates because if someone i duo with or played against multiple times um, but 54.5 roughly is the average win rate about 345 games played about a 4.8 kda with 734 gpm and then about 21k damage uh, dealt and about 18 and a half thousand damage taken and then roughly 55 mvps and, and similar enough numbers for the s's and a's as well and then 3000 turret damage um so it's kind of uh, relevant as well for me to just quickly acknowledge that i am looking at the player's stats a little bit after the game's actually played so I'm playing this game and then after I play all my games and have my session of however like three to eight hours of playing the game then I go back the same night and then I look at the stats so meaning these stats are all slightly different than they were when I actually got matched with these people but they're close enough where you know people's stats aren't going to change that much over the course of a couple hours so I just wanted to acknowledge that as well um, so th again the numbers are not exact it's more just to get a rough estimate of kind of what we're looking at and then we're, now I went through and um, decided to go look at a lower level game as well as some diamond games that my friend Abjeet sent me. Thank you very much for that. So from just a five game sample size, we can see the average win rate is about 1.25 lower. The average game played is about 100 lower. The average KDA is about 0.8 lower. The average GPM is slightly lower, but it's basically the same. Um, and then damage dealt and taken are pretty close as well. And then obviously less MVPs and stuff like that because they're playing less games. Um, and they're also in a lower elo and then a roughly the same amount of turret damage dealt uh, so the main things from this i would say that we can kind of learn is that you know you have better stats typically in higher elos and you're also usually playing more games they're usually just the higher elo players they play more games so if you're not already putting in time and playing a lot of games it's just going to be unlikely that you're going to reach a higher elo um, but again i'm not necessarily trying to give you guys you know a ton of my thoughts i'm just kind of giving you the information um, so do with that what you will okay guys so now i'm just going to look at some trends of, of the data and kind of talk about what that might mean so initially looking at the win rate of my team first as we can see here average ally loss win rate it was about 53.57 which was lower than my average ally win win rate so when we won the game we usually had a higher win rate than if we lost the game which does make sense typically you know people with higher win rates are going to be winning more um and then the average enemy is similar their loss win rate is higher um than hours but again that's because their win win rate is also higher so now just looking overall at the average win rate of my team versus my opponents the average win rate of my team was 53.9 and the average win rate of the enemy was 55.2 roughly 
that is a significant difference in win rate of the enemy team versus my team which would obviously suggest that the win rate is not a significant factor in the matchmaking or else these two things would be closer so what could be making that difference well what's most likely making that difference is the fact that my kda or rather my win rate is lower than typical win rates and we can see here i will go to my most recent stats and highlight these um, from right here we can see my win rate is 51.6 so this would bring down the average win rate of my team um, and because the fact that i am someone with a lower win rate and then that is bringing down the average win rate of my team which suggests that win rate does not affect matchmaking significantly under that same light kda shows a similar story my average kda of my team is 4.94 versus 4.72 on the enemy team so we have over a 0.2 difference in kda um, having a higher kda on my team on average which once again would be making sense based on the fact that my kda is six which is 1.2 higher than the average kda so based on that fact if you divide my kda uh, or rather you divide the difference in my kda versus the average and then you divide it by five based on my teammates you would get a one point or you would get about like 0.25 ish um, which would be very similar to the difference that actually the stats suggest so this would probably show that kda isn't super relevant at least in these specific games to the matchmaking because if it was the kdas would be much more similar but both the kda and the win rate can be explained by my kda and win rate being different and if you don't understand what i mean by why my kda being higher and then making my team's kda being higher showing that it probably means that kda is not relevant to matchmaking the reason i say this is because people I've at least been complaining and saying that matchmaking tries to get you a 50 50 game so under the um the thought that you're the, the matchmaking is trying to get you an even 50 50 game if kda was relevant to this matchmaking significantly the kdas would be very very close of the enemy and mine but instead they're quite different again over a two different uh, point two difference which again it would be completely in line with the fact that my kda is typically higher so again this is why i would say that it probably shows kda is not super relevant to the matchmaking once again there's so many other factors obviously no one's saying matchmaking solely based on kda which means this could just be a coincidence there could have been other factors leading to my teammates um having higher kdas on average but you know most likely it would suggest that kda is not super relevant towards matchmaking okay guys so now we have a scatter plot here of the win rates versus kdas so on the bottom we can see that this is the win rate you know going from 0 to 80 and then the kdas on the left side going from 0 to 12. so based on this we can see kind of the lowest kdas that typically have high win rates are all the way down to a like one um, and i'll show you guys this specific outliers example in a little bit uh, later because this was a big exception this person right here but uh, you we can see towards the middle we typically have the highest concentrated uh, concentration of data roughly around the three to four to five mark around the 54 55 percent win rate which would make sense based on the average we found however we can see that there are people all the way with a two kda with a super high win rate you know two three four kda high win rate we can see there's players with even a 10 kda with low win rate right so you know we got the eights with low win rates we got the eights with high win rates so while K having a higher win rate is loosely connected to having a higher kda it's not super connected we can see there's many different examples of people having high kdas and low win rates and vice versa um so based on this uh you know i'm not this isn't anything about the matchmaking this is just about getting better at the game or at least climbing your your kda is not always going to be you know suggesting that you're a better player once again we looked at that data of the lower uh, the diamonds versus the masters and typically diamond players had a lower kda but there's exceptions um, to all of these so again there's so many different factors taking into account for kda such as the role you're playing the champions you're playing the way you decide to play the game which just means that it's really not too relevant to focus on the difference between kda and win rate and ra rather just focusing on winning the game the best way possible regardless of what your stats would suggest about your skill okay guys so there's two main things i want to talk about before we end off this video First of all, it's that GPM, based on what I found, is more correlated to win rate if you're playing a role as ADC or jungle. So those two roles, ADC and jungle, are more reliant on, on GPM, or at least uh, their win rate is usually higher when they have a higher GPM. Now, every role has a higher GPM when they win more, typically, but it's just more pronounced and more common in jungle and ADC, so use with you know that information for how you will. 
And then lastly, I want to talk about outliers in the data. So we had some players who just don't deserve their rank based on the stats, um, or at least it would strongly suggest that they don't deserve their rank. So if we look at number 485 right here, call, or row 485, we have a player with a 59% win rate almost, with a 1.2 KDA, low GPM, low damage, and they're playing a role which is supposed to have high GPM and pretty good KDA. Now this person did also play a lot of support. They don't only play ADC, but they did play a lot of ADC as well. And you know, despite this, their win rate's really high. So how could we explain this? We could explain this by them being an outlier, which is just how data works, is how statistics work. Sometimes you're going to get bad luck uh, or good luck, and you're just gonna have these outliers where someone plays really bad, but they keep getting good teammates and getting lucky. You could also explain it by saying that the matchmaking system rewards bad players, and if you have bad stats, then you climb quicker and get better teammates and that this player is benefiting from that system. However, based on what I had talked about earlier, the stats would suggest based on my game that it's unlikely that it's just a system causing this guy to climb and it's probably more likely that it's just simply good luck on him. Because once again, if you are having such a high amount of data, you know, we have thousands and hundreds of thousands of people playing the game, it is likely that one or two of these people will just happen to climb despite not being very good. Um, but apart from that, so we have some outliers of people who climb when they shouldn't. Overall, we've determined the average KDA, the average GPM, all these different average things. We see that most people fall roughly in that average, and then there are some people that fall on the outskirts. What, what do I think about the matchmaking overall based on kind of what we found? I would say that it's most likely explained by the fact that the matchmaking is an MMR-based system, meaning that the way it works is if you beat a player with higher MMR, then you you gain more MMR yourself. So if you beat a team that has much higher MMR than you, you will get higher MMR. If you beat people with lower MMR, then you'll get less MMR, and vice versa as well for losing. So yeah, guys, that's kind of why I think it's an MMR-based system, which again, we've already confirmed, or at least I think people have confirmed that it's an MMR-based system, but people think the MMR is affected by stats. And based on what I found, it seems unlikely to me that stats affect the MMR, but I definitely could be wrong. I mean, once again, only a 50 game sample size there's plenty of more games played that may suggest something different this is master plus elo so once again different elos may be different as well whatever you guys think just let me know i definitely there's definitely a chance that i misinterpreted the data in some way or that you know there's inconsistencies this is not perfect i could have done better in terms of only playing solo queue instead of also doing duo queue which could have impacted it and a lot of other things can impact the data so regardless just let me know your thoughts on what i found today and once again it took a long time to get all of this data so if you don't mind giving the video a like that'd be appreciated i'll see you guys later have a good rest of your day